Shepard will inbound. They don't have anyone on the ball. Foul. Him. Nope. Reeves puts up a three. No good. And Oakland with a March memory of a lifetime. So they hit tough shots, and if they miss, they got a rebound. And then they, were, they banked in a couple shots. Uh, they, you know, that's part of it. You know, they played a really good game. They, they hit shots. They did what they needed to do. To the opposing coach? Yeah. And I was about to say something to Cal, but he just had this, like, already defeated look on his face. Yeah. And I was just like, I can't even say anything to him. <laughs> like, we're 10 minutes into the game, and they're already, like, scrambling. So I was just like, all right, we got him. Wait. He has underachieved. There was more expected of them. You haven't been to a Final Four since 2015. You haven't won a national championship since 2012. And then you keep coming up with the song and dance about how young your players are, how young your players are. Well, who the hell picked the young roster? You did. These five years are unacceptable. Unacceptable in terms of John Calipari's standard for his program and unacceptable for the Kentucky program. And John Calipari, you know, he's always been ahead of the curve. In the last five years, he has not been ahead of the curve. All right. In fact, he's been behind the curve because he talks about getting old and staying old. He's been late to the portal. Biggest problem is swaggy Cal needs to go. Old school Cal needs to come back. But you've never had an upset loss like that before. This was the team. This was your one last shot. This was to reverse all the things that have happened and bring back a second era of John Calipari basketball which is just young, talented players that are back at the top. That's the gold standard. And we've had lots of losses. Again, UNC Wilmington, I'll excuse it. I'm not giving up. Team built for March. We get to March. You lose to Texas A&M. You lose to Oakland. And I'm out of defenses for you, Cal. I, I feel dumb. Like, I, I feel stupid. Like, for the past 10 years, I've defended Cal with everything that I have. I don't want to be the guy, too, that just thinks that, like, Cal has sucked and has always sucked. But the part for me that was just so sad is that, like, I mean, this guy gave us so much happiness. The most fun I've ever had watching Kentucky basketball. And I just was sitting there, and he, he isn't that same guy anymore. And you just having to having to accept that was really tough. This I never ever thought ever that this is where we would be with John Calipari. I never thought that it would be like this. So I don't think it can continue like this. How do we go into an off season with what's happening? How? How do fans continue to have interest? And how do fans get that? love and excitement they have if it's going to be the same old thing that cheering you hear in the background that's supposed to be us that's supposed to be kentucky basketball it's supposed to be a celebration and it hasn't been long enough and i think if we're honest and you go back through this four-year history outside of when we were on probation this has been the least successful four-year history in what matters, which is the postseason, in Kentucky basketball history. And if that's the case, how do you keep going? How do you keep doing it? I'm hurting. I'm hurting for our fans, and I know many fans out there are hurting. But I want to say, no one is hurting more than me right now. Let me, Tom, let me just say, we have a standard here. I said early on, they don't put Final Four banners up, only national championship banners. My standard is we're playing to play deep into the NCAA tournament and compete for national titles and win national titles. I wanted this job knowing that was the case. I love this job knowing that was the case. I never left this job. This notion that we have no relationship and stuff like that is garbage. Mm. And, you know, the way we've gotten through 15 years has been pretty good. Yeah. 
and we've had our highs and lows, and we've had some things that haven't gone exactly the way we wanted to, but by and large, I'm sitting next to a guy that I brought here 15 years ago, and we've been together just fine. So yeah. I'm, not a, I'm not a guy that gets in coaches business, and any of my coaches, and they'll all tell you that. So we let them do their work and try and stay out of their way. We're happy that a decision was made with Cal. We get to move forward and get to support at all of our favorite coaches. Like we might have wanted a separation and might have thought that might have been best, but we're ready to support him. We're ready to pump some, sh pump some sunshine. news out of college basketball coach John Calipari has officially said goodbye to the Kentucky Wildcats in a video he released on social media coach Cal said it's time for the university and the fans to hear a new voice after 15 seasons as the head coach in Lexington John Calipari basketball coach for the University of Kentucky right yeah, yeah that's right that's right Guy from Pittsburgh, right? Uh -huh. yep. Guy who has a job for the rest of his life, right? Uh -huh. Correct. Guy that made Kentucky an absolute blue blood and always in the topic of conversation of college basketball. He's going to be down there with the thoroughbreds forever, right? You think? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Nah, he's the head coach of Arkansas now. What? Yep. what? John Calipari said, I'm out of here. Last night, John Calipari leaves Kentucky for Arkansas. Hey, Coach, you got anything no, you want to say to your fans? I'm watching my dog right anything now. Anything right now you want to say yeah. anything to no, your fans I'm right now? Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. Come on, Paul. Come on. My dog, my dog is walking me. Come on. Come on. The last few weeks, we've come to realize that this program probably needs to hear another voice, that the university as a whole has to have another voice giving guidance about this program that they hear. And the fans need to hear another voice. We've loved it here, but we think it's time for us to step away and step away completely from the program. It's a new day for Kentucky basketball. We get to start anew, turn a new page, and we get to do it in the most, I think this is the most fun way possible this era could have ended. Big coach, and he will be taking over the University of Arkansas's basketball program. John Calipari calling the Hogs. Roush, I agree with you. This is his actually most selfless act he did. And I think what's going to happen is it's going to be similar because Calipari to Arkansas, he's going to look back on this and regret it. Sure. Justin Rowland t tweeted out that, that UConn was very worried, and then Trilly Donovan just released that Nate Oates is not going to be an option uh, for Kentucky that he's heard from multiple sources there. Just kind of wanted to get you all's feedback as this is like a, a really big thing in it. It's a random cool. question, but any way Hurley's going to leave UConn and, and take this Kentucky job? Are you hearing anything? Man, I hope not. I mean, the thing about it is, you know, obviously, you know, Kentucky can offer him a lot of money, and uh, mm -hmm. but you also have to live in Kentucky, so we'll see. <laughs> he offered money that would make him the highest paid coach in college athletics. Not just basketball, athletics. If he turns that down, well, you did all you could do. Yep. Like, I mean, what else are you going to do? You can't you can't take the guy hostage and make him come coach here. So you did all you can do. Um, Scott Drew might get that same offer. I would be a little surprised if it was that much. But I so, you know, I, I hear say, someone's on the phone with you. He goes, I'm not even, I was like, I'm, I, all my life, I'm not bull****. Scott Drew goes, yeah, hello? And I go, coach, we need you at Kentucky. been reporting on it but now it is official mark pope is the new men's basketball coach at kentucky pope spent the last five years at byu where he led the cougars to the ncaa tournament twice um, kentucky's athletic director mitch barnhart went after scott drew he went after dan hurley he went after nato nato was the first one that he went after after john calipari left for arkansas uh, and then to last night he went after scott drew was told no this morning this afternoon he went after Dan Hurley was told no again. And then this evening, uh, he ended up on Mark Pope. Point. This was objectively an awful coaching search, a terrible hire. 
And uh, it's nice to see people get on board with it, you all. But this is Kentucky basketball, and Mitch Barnhart made a complete and total mockery of this coaching search. If you're going to run the f- nostalgia train, why not offer it to f- Nazir Muhammad? F- it. If you want a bald 96 member, give it to Jeff Shepard! Hire Rick! <laughs> what the f- are you doing, Mitch? Disgruntled up next. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> This might be your negative this call. This may be, we wondered when we were going to get yeah. one. Go ahead. So I love Mark Pope as a coach, um, but not a Kentucky's coach. I feel like this was rushed, and I, I felt like I was trying to talk myself into it listening in the last hour, but then Mitch started talking. And I, I just, the, I, I'm not really sure what to think anymore. Um, I, I was, I'm still kind of, kind of torn, but it's just, I, I'm, I don't know if I'm mad or sad, and I, I don't know anymore. Um, well, let me ask you a question. But, I think those emotions are completely reasonable. Both mad or sad is not unreasonable. Now that it's happened, do you want it to succeed? Yes, I do. For anything else you think, Mark Pope's a Kentucky guy, right? Mark Pope loves this place. Mark Pope wore our uniform on the BYU floor to make a, to make a video. I want you to picture next January or February when Arkansas comes into town. All right? Cal's going to come into town. He's going to be wearing red. He's going to have with him on the sidelines a staff that I think some of whom at times didn't help him out. And they're going to come in here probably with some big name recruits. What if Mark Pope coming there with the 96 team sitting there on the sideline with him? (laughs) What if we were to beat their ass here in Rubber Arena next year? I got up this morning. I actually went to bed pretty early last night. And I got up this morning, and I've been burning my phone up the last 24 hours wondering who we was going to get. But uh, uh, my reaction was probably the same as everybody else. Uh, I was shocked. I was just like you. But listen, let's give him a chance. I mean, he, he knows what it is to put that jersey on. He knows what Kentucky is. He knows what it means to us fans. He would played under probably the best coach that we've ever had, you know, arguably. And let's give him a chance. I mean, you know, let's see what he can do. I believe, I, and I, you know, we got the NIL to back him up. I mean, you know, hey, don't, don't think he can't get recruits. We got money and we're Kentucky. Everybody to rally the troops. I'm going to get you to put on your Colonel, uh, you know, Mitch Barnhart hat. Rally the troops. Why is Mark Pope going to be successful at Kentucky? I don't know that you can ever describe what it feels like um, to put the C on a shirt and captain a group of guys to a championship. We're going to roll out at Rupp Arena and we're going to have a spotlight on, on the banners that represent this place. There's very few people that can stand on a podium and say they were part of that and they captained the team and now they're ready to leave the ship. He's got the right stock, he's got a beautiful family and he loves, absolutely loves Kentucky across his chest. Get it done, Mark, I love you. Every coach in America at every other job in America stands up at the press conference and they try and moderate expectations. We don't do that here in Kentucky. I understand the assignment. We are here to win banners. I learned about resilience here. And here at Kentucky, resilience is a requirement. It's not an exception, it's a requirement, and I learned that here. I learned here about the passion wins championships. Passion wins championships. Um, Guys, 
it is, it is the greatest honor that I will ever have in my professional or this family career to be able to come back here and do this with you. The difference between Kentucky and every other program in the country is that this is not my team. It's not even our team. It is our team. Our guys will know quickly, and it's hard not to know, it will be one of the great honors of their life to put that jersey on. same style of basketball and will certainly take advantage of Coach Rupp's offer to me for future advice and counsel. Remaining, and they're up nine. 